Hey everyone, welcome back to another Data Science 1 lecture. Uh, today we'll be talking about working with text data. Uh, so we've uh, just wrapped up at least a, a first superficial pass at, at going all the way through the data science lifecycle. Um, so right now it's time in the semester to try and, and front load some of the, the specialty topics that, that will, be, will be more helpful for you uh, thinking about your final projects. So it seems like uh, there's been a lot of interest in natural language processing. Um, so we'll we'll start today with a, a pretty simplistic um, kind of first pass at, at looking at text data um, and, and circle back uh, again later in the semester um, to, to talk about some of the more advanced concepts there. So text data in general, um, and, and maybe one of the reasons it's, it's such a popular uh, data source to, to work on class projects for, um, is, uh, is, is that it's uh, so widely available, um, covers such a, an a immense range of, of topics, and, and more now and now, now lately, um, it's, been, uh, it's been digitized and, and available for us. Uh, to, to use and, and to download through all sorts of, of resources. Uh, one of the, the best um, is, is Google Books, which has been uh, trying to digitize uh, massive, massive libraries of books, um, as well as, as Google News that, that looks at, uh, at many news feeds around the world, uh, lots of, of social media. Um, we're, we're capturing more and more uh, text um, and, and interacting through text with, with more and more Internet of Things devices, um, be it smart home or, or personal uh, smartphones or, or wearable devices. Um, it, it just seems like uh, text data is something that, uh, that, that is, is certainly on the rise, um, and, and speech data is, as well, of course. Um, and, and on that front, as our uh, speech to text uh, systems get better and better, uh, of which they're, I, I think, at a, a pretty uh, interesting threshold now where we've just in the past few years uh, have been able to, uh, what I think is, is pretty well and reliably translate speech into text, um, which, uh, which is, is going to create, a, I think, an enormous uh, uh, growth in the, the written text data sets that, that we'll have access to. So, so what's, uh, what's interesting and unique about text data compared to some of the things that we've looked at already this semester, um, the, the complexity um, is, is certainly something that, that jumps out, and especially um, the, the just disorganization and, and lack of structure um, that, uh, that, that we see this data from, um, even before we get into the, the, uh, the um, complexity science, complexity of um, of text and language, um, just the the raw uh, physical complexity of it, um, I, I think makes it a, a daunting challenge, and that's something that, that we'll talk about quite a bit today. So, uh, speaking of, of structured versus unstructured text, uh, there the the reason why text is such a challenging thing and and unstructured data in general is such a challenging thing, um, is that, uh, that, that the way we as humans read and, and perceive uh, text and, and unstructured data or, or data that's uh, you know, not uh, perfectly error-free, um, like these examples uh, of which I've, I've probably totally lost you on this slide um, now that you're reading both of these, um, but but this sort of, sort of unstructured um, error prone text um, is is incredibly hard for computers, which have to take things uh, quite literally and, and look in, in very specific places for data, um, which which is kind of very opposed to the way that, that we process uh, information in the world. So while understanding uh, different types of, of speech in, in written language uh, it seems like a really simplistic thing for us. Um, any of you who've tried to to work with this and, and build programs that, that read and understand text uh, know that it's a, a very challenging thing. Um, in the the very start of of AI, uh, understanding language was was one of the the things that uh, was 
uh, noted that, that they were going to solve in the, the first uh, AI conference uh, where they, they spent uh, a summer together at Dartmouth. Um, and, uh, you know, many decades later, I, I feel like we're still just scratching the surface of, of truly understanding and, and processing natural language. Um, but, but that said, uh, I, I think, you know, we are at a really exciting time where, where some of the things that we'll uh, allude to this time, but, but really talk about more in the, our next uh, NLP lecture um, are, are making uh, enormous strides, I, I think, towards a, a machine understanding, perhaps, but, but certainly a machine processing prediction with text. So uh, not all of, of the text that we actually have to deal with is in this totally open-ended, unstructured format. Uh, many of the, the challenges, like the, the spelling errors that, that you just saw, um, or, or uh, you know, small formatting issues are present even in uh, fairly structured and organized texts, like, uh, like survey or form entries. Uh, so, these can uh, exist in data frames, and, and we have to worry about kind of structuring the, the data itself, um, but, but simply uh, dealing with uh, the complexity of the actual text itself. Um, and so, so here's an, an example of, uh, of a data frame that, that has you know, some uh, numerical values, but also some, some text values. Uh, so there, there are many challenges that can come about from this. Uh, maybe the the kind of first and simplest is uh, it's just spelling errors, um, and uh, there you know there's lots of of spell check functions that, that we can run as a, a first pass towards uh, may, maybe uh, uh, addressing some of those, um, but uh, especially when there's uh, human entry of of text, um, we we often see that uh, that the format is not standardized. Um, that can can uh, be related to, to in this case um, kind of formal versus informal naming of things. This this can uh, deal with uh, spacing or punctuation uh, or uh, capitalization uh, or the ordering of, of different words. Um, and looking at the the two entries here about uh, about what county uh, the, these addresses are from. Uh, we as humans can look at this very simply and um, and, and, and tell that uh, the exact same thing is is meant to be put in in both of these data frames. Um, but if you were to ask a, a computer, they would say that, that these two entries are completely unique. Um, if you were to just compare uh, and ask if if the strings are the same or different. So we'll let's talk about uh, some kind of basic uh, string manipulation approaches that, uh, that we can use to standardize data and, and clean up some of this messiness. Um, so, uh, so your reading for today's lecture uh, talked a lot about, uh, about string uh, operations that, that are available in Python. Um, and uh, here are some examples of, uh, for example, the, the lower function. Uh, setting all of the, the letters to lowercase. Uh, search and replace is something that's, that's really helpful um, and, and common uh, in processing text. Um, similarly, we can, uh, we can use uh, cleaning functions like strip that will strip off uh, leading or trailing white space or punctuation. Um, and uh, and um, we can also uh, split strings uh, according to uh, certain uh, certain characters. If we uh, if we we know that we have to break up strings, and, and we'll get to that in a second as well. Um, so this is just to say that there's uh, kind of lots of basic manipulation tools available to us, um, just with the the data type string that uh, you know probably most of you are, are familiar with, having gone through basic Python courses. Um, and, uh, and I'm, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on, on some of these more basic ideas, um, especially since, since you're getting this from your textbook. Uh, again, I, I want to be uh, providing uh, kind of unique uh, information here in these lectures, um, and, and especially basic things like this where just uh, figuring out what, uh, what functions are available in, in these packages is something that, that I'm confident you guys can all do uh, in, in your reading and, and on your own. Um, 
So, so this is a, a screenshot right from the textbook uh, suggesting some of these uh, functions, that, uh, all, all ones I, I just named here, except for the, the top uh, indexing uh, function, which is, is really nice if you uh, have structured um, strings that, that you know you need to, to capture the, the first uh, or last or, or some, uh, some specific uh, uh, portion of. Um, and, and also, uh, I should note that uh, that these string functions are not just available in in basic uh, Python, but also uh, through the the pandas data frames we've been using, uh, as well as a, a regular expression library uh, in Python. And the the formatting uh, of the the function calls here, as you can tell, is is slightly different, but all of these things do uh, extremely similar things. Um, so uh, very much the way that the pandas came included with some of our basic plotting functions, uh, the, the same thing is true for, for string manipulation as well. So I, I encourage you to go look at the, the pandas string package uh, in particular. Uh, so, so speaking of uh, structured text um, and, and especially uh, splitting and, and uh, binding um, uh, certain portions of our text data, um, matching uh, and, and looking for uh, specific types of um, types of, of entries in text uh, is a, an extremely common and, and useful thing to do. Um, and, and there are, are many ways to go about this. So for example, if we're looking at dates and we know that our text is in uh, a format uh, with two, digit, two digits for the day, two digits for the month, and four digits for the year, uh, then it's it's really simple to just use uh, indexing uh, to look for uh, you know what what characters what, what place characters. So for example, in in that case, if you uh, wanted the month, then you know that that is uh, the the fourth uh, and, and fifth um, uh, characters in in your string. Um, similarly, the the split function is really nice here. If you uh, if you uh, weren't quite sure if uh, the the month and, and day were two digits or single digits and didn't know the exact position. Um, you can use a, a split um, that can pull out uh, certain uh, that they that can break apart uh, your your string based on on certain delimiters. Uh, so, for example, to to even get this uh, this date out of um, the the HTML call here. Um, you can see that it's it's inside the square brackets. We can split on that, um, and and then to to split the the string into the the month, day, and the year, you might split uh, using the the slashes. Um, so uh, it, now we're, we're looking at slightly less structured text, uh, but uh, of, of course this isn't perfect too. You could imagine that someone used dashes uh, in, instead of instead of slashes to uh, tell apart the the day, month, and year. Um, and, and we would need a, an even more complex uh, uh, string recognition function for that. So, so you can kind of see the pattern here where uh, the, the less assumptions that we make about, uh, about what the format of the text is, the, the more and more complex uh, programs we're going to need to be able to um, re really get at uh, the information that we want inside of, inside of these strings. So, uh, so this uh, this simple split function is uh, is sufficient for uh, this particular piece of text, uh, but but as you can tell, it's already getting a, a little bit unwieldy um, to, uh, to 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 think about. Um, so uh, another tool that is available for uh, th this question of extracting certain types of information from text are regular expressions. Um, so, so regular expressions are uh, a, a format. You can even think of them as a, a simple programming language, um, where uh, you can put in certain types of uh, of wildcards or uh, or data types or, um, or 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 strings to match, um, and the regular expression will search through your text data um, and let you know where um, your where uh, a, a entry of text or a, or a string of text, uh, a subset of your text uh, lives that matches the the pattern that you you've defined in your regular expression. Uh, there is a 
a lot of um a lot of uh learning and, and memorization that goes into building these regular expressions so i'm, I'm not going to uh, to waste your time going through all of the the different types of expressions here um i, I feel like that's uh, again one of the things that's easiest to to read um and, and see examples of uh, as you're going uh, but just to say that that here is an example of uh, a um of a, of a specific regular expression that pulls out information in the, the form of, of this date. Uh, so the just to, to walk through it really quick, the, the R just tells you to, to use raw text. Um, the, uh, the D and uh, the, the, the first D is, is telling you that you're expecting some number of digits, that's the, the uh, D plus. Um, after a, a slash, you're expecting uh, some number of, of characters, the, the W plus, and then after another slash, you're expecting uh, some number of digits again, the, the D plus. Um, and you can see this uh, again with the, uh, with the, um, the digits for the time. And then at the end, we, we might get some other format. Um, so we expect uh, some other uh, amount of, of wild card. Uh, characters at, at the very end in the uh, dot plus. Um, so uh, you, you can uh, read through the, the regex uh, uh, chapter in the book and, uh, and, and see some of these uh, format definitions yourself. Uh, what I would really recommend actually is, uh, is on top of that reading to go to uh, regex one, uh, which is a really nice online tutorial um, that's a, a bit more hands-on um, and it makes uh, dealing with these uh, uh, regular expressions and, and learning them uh, much easier to, to understand and, and to internalize, I think. Um, one, of, one of the things with, with regular expressions is it's they're often much easier to write than they are to read. Um, that, uh, that reading a complex regex is, uh, is uh, quite a challenge in itself, and, and we'll show an example of that in, in just a second. Um, but uh, but but this uh, this uh, little tutorial lets you uh, learn regular expressions through building them and writing them yourself. So uh, I highly recommend uh, you spend a few minutes on this. Um, so uh, regular expressions are uh, really handy and, and really useful for a lot of really simple and, and especially pretty well structured um, text extraction asks and, and questions. Um, like I said, uh, there, there's a lot of syntax that go into them. They're, they're hard to read and interpret, and, and because of that, often hard to debug. Um, so uh, so they're, they're actually not a, a tool that I particularly use a lot, um, but, but I know that there are lots of, of use cases for them um, where, where, where they're, they certainly are the, the best tool, and they're, they're good to be aware of. Um, but uh, like, uh, like uh, Jamie's quote here, um, and Jamie uh, Zwinski is a, a really fantastic uh, computer hacker um, for, for those of you who don't recognize the name. Um, but uh, it says that uh, some people, uh, when confronted with a problem, think they'll, they'll use regular expressions and, uh, and now they have two problems. Um, so a, a nice play on, on this uh, classic quote of, uh, of now they have two problems. Um, but uh, I, I think it's it's uh, it's fitting that uh, you know dealing with the the format and the challenges and the overhead of regular expressions uh, from a, a code writing perspective uh, make, makes them often less than a, an ideal choice, um, and, and that's especially true as you get to more and more complex uh, complex pattern matching, where it's the case that your regular expressions will look larger and larger and you'll have to do more debugging on them, which, which again, becomes harder the, the bigger they are. Um, I, I would just uh, note uh, for, for an example of this and, and to refute uh, one of the, the points on the, uh, refute or, or follow up on one of the points in the previous slide that says, uh, you know, really uh, complex strings like, uh, like checking for a valid email address is hard to do with, with regular expressions. Um, and, and of course, your uh, your textbook has an example here of uh, of a you know really simple email check um, 
that uh, that happens to you know really accurately pull out the the Gmail addresses from the sentence in in what's a, a really simple uh, regular expression that's just saying uh, you expect uh, some text before the uh, the text at gmail.com. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll say uh, again in, in one of the challenges of regular expressions uh, where uh, actually you, you want to do a lot of unit testing yourself um, is that, uh, that, that often uh, it's, it's hard to think in, in formalities of exactly how you define a, a, a number of strings. So given uh, all of the, the little subtleties about what could make a, an email address valid or invalid, uh, this, this is actually what the regular expression for checking uh, for a, a generic email address looks like. Um, and, and I certainly would need uh, a, a few minutes, if not uh, a lot longer, to, to really digest what's going on here. Um, but, uh, but just to, to give you a, a little flavor of, uh, of regular expressions out in the wild. So, uh, so turning uh, from this really structured data into uh, what, what I think is, is one of the, the more interesting and, and challenging um, and, and also one of the, the more opportune things to be looking at right now in, in data science and machine learning um, is, is kind of this truly open-ended uh, text data. Um, that was a weird transition. Uh, so, uh, so thinking about uh, structured text, um, that uh, that or thinking about how, how to structure text, um, we uh, if if we are given uh, some uh, some large uh, amount of written text, sentences, and paragraphs, for example, at, from Google Books or Google News, um, or uh, or or. Twitter or whatever your your favorite uh, text API is, um, this this will just come to you as big long strings, um, and the the question is how do we get this into a data frame uh, so that we can manipulate it with a lot of the tools that we've looked at so far, um, and and I think uh, quite simply the answer is uh, we we engineer features that uh, that can turn uh, this open ended text into uh, structured structured information. Um, so, so in particular, uh, re recall from last time the, the one-hot encoding um, that, that we talked about where we were able to take uh, the different values for uh, a certain category uh, and, and turn those into uh, binary features that, that say whether or not that value is present or not. Uh, now, it, it turns out that uh, that uh, sorry, I'm, I'm distracted by the uh, the the transitions that uh, appear to be copied and pasted uh, throughout here. Uh, it's the, uh, the the bag of words uh, encoding is uh, an example of a tool that uh, is is very similar to the the one hot encoding that we've talked about, um, but uh, but does this with text data. So uh, rather than taking a, a single featured column and asking what values are, are present or not. Um, the idea is to take uh, some open-ended string of text and asking uh, which values are present or not within that string of text. Um, so, uh, so in particular, we could think of the possible values being, uh, for example, every possible word in the human dictionary, um, or if you're you know working with uh, with some big corpus of text, every word that. Uh, occurs at all in your text, or maybe you know occurs more than ten times, or more than a hundred times, um, or you know any of the the top thousand words in your text. Um, there's there's many ways to define uh, which uh, which features you will use, um, which which uh, which values of words you will make columns for. Um, but uh, but in general, it's uh, you know uh, any. Uh, any words that, that will occur in, in your text corpus. Um, and, uh, and we'll organize these, uh, like, like we said, in feature columns. And, uh, and rather than doing a, kind of a strict one-hot encoding, which says whether or not this feature is present, um, we'll, we'll slightly generalize the, the one-hot encoding to say, um, we'll, we'll also uh, give a, a count for, for how frequently, or yeah, how, uh, how many times that word occurs. Uh, in our text data. 
So for example, uh, you can see uh, the example here of uh, taking a, a sentence and turning it into a, 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 a bag of words vector, um, which uh, has many, many entries for, uh, in this case, all possible words in, uh, in the English language and, and maybe even some made up ones at the end here. Uh, they, they happen to be in alphabetical order, um, and in this case that's a kind of standard procedure, but, uh, but isn't strictly necessary for, uh, for doing this, as long as you keep track of what your, um, what your different words are, um, and that, uh, that you keep them in the, the same order, so you make sure that you're, um, you're putting entries uh, into the right column. I, it, it really doesn't matter at all uh, what, uh, what ordering uh, you you put your columns in, uh, but but this is to say uh, that that in this case the the columns like fun learning and, and machine uh, will have real valued uh, or have non-zero uh, entries in them where uh, you know many of the other columns most of the other columns uh, in in the set of all possible word, words will not occur in in this sentence. The bag of words encoding. Um, also uh, is is a, a a nice way uh, to to think about you know structuring uh, these uh, uh, the, these uh, different pieces of text into a data frame um, and and to to say it a little bit more concretely if if we're looking at not just one sentence um, but but many sentences you can think of the the vectors of of our uh, bag of words encoding. Um, as being rows in a data frame. Um, so, so in this case, each separate document that we have is, is considered a, a, a row um, uh, that, uh, that matches up with the, uh, the feature columns for the, the different words. Um, so, so this is kind of both to introduce this, this structure and, and kind of explicitly say we're turning this into a data frame, um, and, th and then also to introduce the um, the uh, nomenclature, uh, the 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 naming of a document as each of our specific text entries, and then the the corpus as being the collection of, of all text entries that we have. So turning this into a a bag of words, uh, like this uh, this nice cartoon here does, um, is is fantastic because it means that we can. Uh, use all of the, the models that we've talked about and, and many more that we haven't yet, uh, including uh, LDA here, which is, is mentioned in our bag of words, um, which we, we may or may not get to uh, later in this semester, uh, but, but it's a, a popular, uh, uh, popular uh, text uh, model for those of you who, who are interested um, in, in looking at, uh, at, looking at uh, clustering text documents. Um, that uh, that this is uh, the this bag of words is, is fantastic for letting us uh, uh, formulate uh, different tasks uh, like clustering or or especially like prediction tasks um, in in uh, a, a way that uh, that fits into kind of our standard procedure for building models that that do these things. But that said, uh, there are lots and lots of issues with the bag of words encoding. Uh, that, that make it less than perfect, and some of those will be deal breakers for the particular problem that you have, and, and some of them won't. Um, so, uh, so ju just some things to consider. Uh, firstly, uh, if, if depending on what your uh, alphabet of uh, possible words are, um, the data frame that you end up with could be uh, an insanely huge data frame. Um, in uh, in the standard bag of words, I, I want to say it's about uh, six hundred thousand unique words um, in in Google News. Um, I, I could be off in, in either direction by uh, a, about an order of magnitude, but let, let's just say it's a, a very long, uh, very big uh, feature vector, um, and uh, and this could be a a, a, a huge issue if you're particular model or your type of analysis is sensitive to the number of features that you're feeding into it. Um, for example, some might be prone to, to overfitting if we have uh, lots of features that are, are very sparse. Um, but, but that said, other types of analysis, uh, this, this might not be such an issue. Um, 
Another issue is that uh, we have to predefine what our alphabet is, um, usually uh, based off of our, our training corpus. Um, and so, uh, so when we see uh, new words that aren't in that, uh, that set of words we've defined as our features, um, then, uh, then we, uh, we're, we're not able to use those in our prediction. So, so kind of most literally, we would just drop them and, and not consider them features of the sentences. Um, a, a little bit more on this later of, of dropping words, um, but uh, but that could be an issue. And, and similarly, what words you even choose to be in your alphabet or not could be an issue. If, uh, for example, you've defined uh, your your set of features to only include words that occur more than ten times in your corpus, and yet maybe some word that's really frequently used is actually really informative, and uh, in the times where that word is present even though their rare events are, are really, uh, really strong signals of some, uh, some critical event in your data set. So um, something to, to watch out for. Uh, maybe the, the kind of most glaring um, issue is that uh, when we think about just asking when words are present or not, um, we lose any information about the, the ordering of words. Um, and in just a moment, we'll, uh, we'll come back to that. Um, quickly, before that, I want to touch on, on the previous point, which is that uh, that uh, we may want to drop some words. Um, so in, in particular, some very common words like uh, the, and, to, a, uh, that, uh, that occur uh, in almost all text documents or, or in a, a large fraction of text documents. Um, and, uh, and contain fairly little information. They're, they're kind of filler words. Um, or, or formatting words um, really uh, don't provide a lot of information to your uh, analysis. Um, and if if you're looking at uh, doing some sort of analysis like you know the most common words in this type of text, uh, almost always you'll get these words that are really common in every type of text. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk a, a little bit at the end of the lecture about uh, about how we think about uh, what words are important. Um, but for for uh, this uh, this particular um, set of words, what we'll end up doing is is just saying that the the set of common words we're just going to drop from um, from our sentences and, and not consider them to be features of the data. Um, and, and these are, are called stop words. Um, and uh, and, and uh, many of the the tools and packages that we'll talk about later also. Um, have a, have a list of stop words that, that you can easily remove from your text. Um, so I, I won't go through uh, kind of enumerating all of the possible ones. Uh, so so getting back to this issue of uh, of the ordering of words, here's a, a nice example uh, of of two sentences where the uh, the set of words that you have is the same. Um, the ordering is only very slightly different, and yet the meaning of these two sentences is, uh, you know, perhaps totally different. Um, not not uh, not totally unrelated, but but very different uh, in that they're opposites. Um, and and this uh, is a, a really common thing uh, with specific words, uh, especially negation words like this, that, that can really change uh, the the meaning of a sentence depending on whether they're included or not, and and especially where they are, uh, which is to say, you know, which uh, word or, or phrase they're negating. So uh, what, what are some ways that, that we can capture this? Uh, some of the, the tools that we'll use uh, or we'll, we'll talk about in, in future lectures, we'll get a little bit more to looking at, at kind of the, the structure of, of whole sentences. Um, but, but for now, uh, maybe a, a simple approach is to consider sequences of words rather than, than single words. Uh, so, for example, uh, the the word "not" in both of, of the examples above was uh, negating, you know, one word after it. Um, and so, if you were to consider your features to be combinations of uh, of uh, or your features not to be just single words, but combinations of of two words in a row, um, then uh, then you would have different features for. Uh, in, in this case, not well and not enjoy. Um, that, uh, that, that these two uh, combinations of words would, would show up differently in your data frame. Uh, it's, uh, 
important to to keep in mind that that while this uh, lets you look at more and more complex uh, pieces of language, uh, the number of possible n-grams that you'll have as you grow go to longer and longer sequences um, uh, may mean that you have lots and lots and lots of features that, that the number of features you have will will grow quadratically here or, or exponentially um, as you consider longer and longer n-grams. Um, and uh, and uh, that uh, that you know the the most frequent n-gram is is the one gram, which is is the bag of words model. Um, so uh, so so really, what you know what we're doing here with uh, our two grams is uh, is to have uh, bags of two words. So uh, again, an example of this put into our vector format here is that uh, that we'll consider uh, you know words next to each other. Um, to be uh, to be these tokens, we'll call them um, that are our entries of possible features we could consider for a text document. Uh, you'll notice here that we took those stop words out before we do this uh, two gram sequencing, um, which uh, which you know may or may not have been a good idea, um, but uh, but hopefully is has kind of removed the filler and and gotten more to the the structure of our our data and relationships between important words. Um, so uh, so as, as you can see uh, in our uh, in our our vector format here that the now the the bag of words uh, can have a, a single word like uh, like written. Or well that uh, you know occurs in, in more than one of these features, um, but uh, again th these features will only be present if both of those words in order appear in our text. So th so they're becoming more and more specific and uh, and contextualized. There are uh, a number of other uh, tools and, and ideas that uh, that we can use for pre-processing uh, the this. Uh, unstructured text into our, our bag of words and into our data frame. Um, I'm just going to talk about uh, a couple more here um, and, and then point you to some packages where, where you can look at, at other examples of uh, interesting things you could do in, in tutorials and, and modules. Um, so one, uh, one very common thing that we'll do is run our text through a tokenizer. So, uh, so this is to say that uh, you know before we were thinking of tokens as being our, our single words for our for our for our bag of words or two word combinations for our two grams, uh, we can think of tokens as being kind of like the the basic uh, building block of, of speech that we're considering um, to be uh, you know in any uh, length or type of um, of text um, and. And uh, so, for example, these might not even be full words. Um, here, uh, you can see this this tokenizer uh, example has taken uh, uh, a complex word like cannot and broken it up into uh, its its two subsequent pieces. Um, and and these really are the the tokens, um, which is to say, it uh, it it takes uh, the text and breaks it down into its most basic components. Um, which uh, which are often full words, sometimes are, are roots or prefixes um, or uh, or breaks off conjunctions, um, breaks off punctuation as you can see here into to separate tokens. Um, so so these uh, these tokens are what we often think of as being the, the features in our uh, in in the set of features for our bag of words. Uh, now the the tokenizer is is really nice for splitting apart the text, um, but uh, the the meaning of the tokens and and what the tokens are uh, isn't always entirely straightforward. So oftentimes after we tokenize, we'll also run it uh, through some other uh, type of of analysis. Um, one of the the common ones is to stem the words, um, which is just to say that. Uh, Again, uh, with computers uh, taking text quite literally, um, that, that even things like different endings um, may be considered the same token, um, but uh, but would uh, uh, 
presumably be very similar or identical meanings um, from a, a conceptual perspective. So it, it might make sense and uh, help to give us slightly more general models and certainly to help shrink the number of features we have to consider um, if we were to uh, to, to take uh, all of these related words and then stem them just to their root. Um, so uh, so the, the stemmer function here um, is uh, an, an example of, of, a, of a, a function that does exactly that. Uh, don't, don't worry too much about the, the code for right now. I'll point you to, uh, to, to these packages uh, afterwards, uh, just to say that, uh, that it takes this list of, of words um, and, and spits out uh, the, the stem of all of them uh, as the, the output of the cell. Um, a, a similar idea is uh, lemmatization um, that, uh, that takes the, the root of the word. Um, so in, in the case of, of stemming, uh, what we'll often do is, is end up uh, you know, looking at uh, the, the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the core segment, the, the stem of the word, um, and sometimes that is uh, is is something that that makes sense, um, and, and that uh, we can use as a variable. And uh, other times, depending on especially what we want to do with that variable, um, we we might want to have uh, not just uh, just stems, but but root words. Um, and so, uh, looking at the the lemma for. Uh, for each of these words, we, we can see that uh, the, the results are slightly different, um, sometimes better, sometimes worse. So for example, we might have uh, have thought that studying and studies uh, should have the, the same root, but uh, in, in this case, uh, they're, they're defined, have different roots, um, or, or sometimes uh, can be really helpful. So uh, here, um, you know, cries and, and cry, both the uh, return cry the word, not uh, not cry the, the stem, that's that's not a word. Um, so uh, again, pros and cons of these different approaches. Um, for, for the most part, you can think of them inter interchangeably, um, but if you were to do something else, like let's say, uh, look for synonyms or frequencies of each of these uh, resulting stems, uh, the stems obviously aren't real words, where the, the lemma being an actual root word is a, a valid word where you can do those secondary analyses. Uh, so uh, to, to kind of wrap this up, uh, let, let me say that uh, these are just examples of the, the many, many things that you can do with text data. Um, and, uh, and, and others include uh, for example, tagging the type of speech um, that, that a word is. Um, and, and that includes uh, actually pretty detailed tags. So it's not just, you know, verbs versus nouns, um, but, uh, you know, uh, common nouns versus proper nouns or past tense versus future tense verbs. Um, the, the breakdown of, of these, these uh, type of speech tagging is, is actually uh, quite, quite impressive. Um, and, uh, and, and if you look at the, uh, the NLTK, which is the, the Python natural language toolkit, um, that this, uh, it, it package has lots and lots of, of really great, um, features and, and tutorials that are aimed kind of exclusively at natural language processing. Um, so, uh, if, if this is, uh, something that you're interested in, in looking at for your project, I, I'd highly recommend that, uh, that you... Uh, take a, a read through that and and uh, you know also uh, let me know um, if, if you have kind of specific questions on, on modules that, that you want to hear more about uh, but uh, I, I won't waste any more time in what's already uh, starting to become a, a bit of a long lecture um, go, going through them exhaustively. Uh, I'll, I'll also say that uh, our uh, machine learning toolkit here scikit-learn uh, also has some of these these really nice features. So um, the uh, the tokenizing and and one hot encoding into the the bag of words uh, is is done uh, simultaneously in this uh, this count vectorizer um, uh, vectorizer uh, function that that vectorizes, which which is uh, essentially to say tokenizes, um, and then uh, and then also uh, builds a matrix of the the counts of those tokens. Um, so it's so a really great uh, kind of one-stop shop for 
for uh, this type of pre-processing um, if, if you're already using scikit-learn for some of your other machine learning models. Um, the, uh, the feature extraction text uh, module doesn't have a, a whole bunch of, of functions, uh, but it's, it's something that's, that's good to be uh, aware of. Uh, so so uh, to wrap up um, and and uh, again point you to those uh, those packages for the the syntax and, and tools, um, I just want to give a, a little tiny flavor of of uh, kind of what uh, we we can do if we uh, have these uh, these data frames with our counts of different words. Um, and, and obviously, uh, you know, any of the, the modeling that we've already talked about or that we will talk about that the uses features um, is, is uh, certainly interesting and, and on the table that, you know, you could regress the uh, number uh, or you could regress some outcome based off of, you know, the, the number of times that any word uh, occurs in, uh, in, a, in a given corpus or sorry, a, a given document and, uh, and that would be a, a linear model of um, of what words are associated with with what outcomes, um, but kind of un unique to uh, to words rather than than some other uh, features that we've talked about so far is that uh, that uh, just looking at and comparing frequencies between different types of uh, different types of classes um, or, or using those frequencies to predict classes. Um, is uh, is uh, something that that I, I think is is really interesting and, and very commonly used here. Um, so uh, so here's a, an example of just visualizing the uh, the occurrence of words um, in in these different corpuses and in this format of the the horizontal bar plot um, with with the different words is a, a really common one. Um, I'll, uh, I'll I'll say that uh, that uh, going back to the the point you made before about uh, about stop words being really frequent, um, a, a kind of caveat to this uh, word frequency analysis, where where we're kind of just looking at at basic counts as a a, a data science outcome, um, sometimes doesn't make a, a lot of sense uh, if you're you know just saying that uh, simple words like the and. and um, or, or other words that tend to be really common in your uh, corpus uh, turn out to be the the most interesting or the most frequent um, most frequent words in your different documents. That's uh, that's certainly a, a true frequency analysis, but uh, but maybe not an interesting one. Uh, so so one of the things that, that we look at is uh, balancing this term frequency, um, which is uh, you know very literally the uh, the count or proportion of the this word um, in your um, in, in your document uh, with, with also uh, what we call the the inverse document frequency so this is uh, to say uh, what proportion of documents uh, this term occurs in uh, so, so this is a way of uh, balancing out and and downplaying words that uh, that occur a lot in your current document just because they occur in all the documents um, so if we, we were to, to multiply these together, uh, we would get uh, an expression called the, the term frequency inverse document frequency, uh, or, or TFIDF, uh, which would tell us uh, which words occur in the document that we're looking at, um, or, or the, the row of our data frame that we're, that we're uh, looking at uh, that don't occur very much in other documents or other rows. And then that's to say that that word is really important um, in, in this document. It's looking at the, the relative um, the, the relative difference or, or relative frequency um, of, of that word uh, in, in this document compared to other ones. And, and that's often uh, a, a metric that you'll see plotted in, in those horizontal bar plots of, of uh, naming the importance of different words. Um, so, so there, there are all sorts of, of um, other or, or related um, uh, analyses and, and models, and, and I'll save most of that for, for next time because again we're we're getting a little bit long winded here. Um, but uh, uh, you know some are 
uh, are uh, input into very sophisticated models, and, and others are, are as simple as lookup tables. So, so for example, um, if, if you were to uh, look at uh, the, the sentiment of each word, um, which there are lots of ways to do that, but one way is to uh, go to Mechanical Turk and ask people, uh, you know, how happy or sad they think words are, which is luckily something people have already done. So there's, you know, uh, big data sets uh, that, that you can reference that'll tell you how happy or sad a given word is um, and, and just, uh, you know, multiply your uh, term counts or your, your uh, term frequency and verse document frequency uh, by the sentiment of each word um, in in your your document, and summing those up could tell you, uh, you know, kind of on aggregate what the sentiment is of the the document you're looking. At. So so there's also kind of lots of examples of of uh, analyses that aren't you know complex machine learning models, but uh, but are just taking the fact that we have uh, the text in this really nice data frame format and, and using it to to reference or transform it. Uh, based off of of some other information you have about those words. So to to wrap things up uh, uh, and and put a, a, an end on on kind of this superficial dive into uh, the structuring text data and and just very the beginnings of of beginning to work with it, um, we uh, we talked about regular expressions as being really great tools for uh, for text that has a a, a predefined um, pretty regular structure, uh, that there are uh, lots of string manipulation functions uh, that, that, again, are great if you have structured text or, or are great at taking pretty simple text and adding a little bit more structure to it. Uh, in, in terms of uh, taking unstructured text and, and putting it into a data frame so that we can uh, begin to, to use some of our other tools on it, the, the bag of words and n-gram models that uh, are, are generalizations of our one-hot encoding um, to, to count encodings. Uh, are really uh, fantastic approaches here. Um, and, and later on in the semester, we'll talk about uh, some even more general um, or, or, or even more complex um, uh, versions of, of the, the bag of word and n-gram models um, that, that are very commonly used in, in some cutting edge machine learning NLP uh, today. Um, and uh, and I uh, again want to point you towards the uh, natural language toolkit, the uh, Python NLTK, um, and and uh, some text uh, functions in Scikit-Learn uh, to let you guys do some digging and playing uh, with this uh, on, on your own and in your own projects too. Uh, so so with that, I'll uh, I'll wrap it up for today and say uh, that uh, this sort of of text natural language processing uh, is something that I find really fascinating and, and interesting. Um, and uh, it's it's great to hear that uh, a lot of people in the class uh, share that enthusiasm, and I'm uh, I'm curious to to see what you guys come up with for for final projects in this space. Uh, for those of you who are interested in it, um, and uh, and feel free to uh, talk uh, about uh, about more of this uh, through our uh, discussion boards or, or in our our synchronous sessions too. Um, as uh, as like I've said, I've taken kind of a, a very superficial approach to to what is a, a really complex subfield, um, but I'm uh, looking forward to to those discussions, and uh, I'll see you all online. Thanks.